Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to Milton Keynes. I'm in a different location this time because I'm having my first little getaway in over two years, which is lovely to come and explore somewhere new, somewhere different after being stuck at home for so long. So I'm primarily here to see the We Will Rock You musical. That's the Queen musical, of course. As a big Queen fan, I've been really looking forward to seeing that because I've never had the opportunity before. And when there was an audio described performance announced, I had to come and see it. Um, so I thought, well, while I'm coming here to see that, I might as well make a week of it, because I've got some days on at work as well, and as I say, I haven't been away for ages. So I've made a few days of it. I'm going to go and see uh, Bletchley Park as well, and the National Museum of Computing that's on the same site, and also the Milton Keynes Museum that I've heard great things about, and then go for some walks as well and look at the shops and things, all as time and weather allows, of course. It's uh, looking a bit dodgy weather-wise this week, but fingers crossed it'll be OK. We'll have to see. But I thought I'd do a little video diary to start this month's favourites video off, so I don't have to remember everything when I get home. I can give you my immediate reactions to things when I get back to the hotel tell each day and whatnot so yeah there's going to be a lot more in my blog of course about this there's going to be at least one or two blog posts about everything i've got up to but um yeah i thought i'd do a little summary here and then you can go and check out the links in my description below as usual um and yeah it was nice and easy to get here um, i got the train from Houston, just half an hour straight through one stop and you know when i got to this end i used the uh, move it app to figure out the public transport to get the bus to the hotel and this isn't an ad by the way nothing here is sponsored or gifted everything i'm doing this week i've paid for myself i've decided what to do myself so nobody else is involved with this it's all my own decisions and money and opinions and everything but yeah i found the move it app easy enough to use as a first time user and um, i don't know if it works with speech or not because i don't use that but visually it was all right for me um it told me which buses i could get from the station there were a few different ones but obviously i chose the first one the easiest one to get that I was just pulling in as well, which was nice and handy. So I was able to get on there. I was able to use my Freedom Pass that I use on London's transport system for free travel on that. And while I was on the bus, the app was showing me on the map where I was. And, you know, occasionally the bus might have to go down different streets to the normal route because of road works or whatever. But I always knew where I was. I knew I wasn't going the wrong direction or anything. And when I was getting close to the stop, it was alerting me to say, you know, it's getting closer. Two stops to go, next stop, and you are here. So... It was very clear and easy. I knew exactly where to get off. And then from there, I knew exactly where the hotel was because it was just literally just next door. So, yeah, nice and easy to get here. Nice and easy to check in as well. I'm at the Premier Inn. There's a few different Premier Inns in Milton Keynes, but I'm in the uh, Theatre District one. And it's just the average Premier Inn, really. I mean, they're all much the same if you stayed in them before. Nice and comfortable. Nice place to have as a base um, when you're going out and about. So, yeah, it should be uh, perfectly comfortable as per usual. The view is just of a car park. There's nothing exciting about that, but then I wasn't expecting there to be. But there is the escape centre out there and um, where they've got various things like a cinema and a bowling alley and all sorts of things like indoor skydiving and stuff like that. That's why there's places to eat as well and there's a weather spoon outside it and all this kind of thing. So yeah, I might go and have a little poke around there and there's the centre MK shopping centre across in the other direction as well and there's a park nearby and yeah, there's various places I can go for a walk. That's probably what I'm going to do this afternoon on this uh, Monday afternoon, just go and have a little wander because I've nothing booked this afternoon afternoon Bletchley Park is my uh, first booking which I've got booked for tomorrow on Tuesday so yeah this evening I'm just going to go and have a little walk and go and eat somewhere and yeah just um, have a little nosy around so I'll update you uh, either later today or tomorrow as half me getting on so yeah I will see you soon right just a quick little update from Monday evening I did go out for a walk I went to the Centre MK and Midsummer Place shopping centre across the road it's massive in there all sorts of shops everything you can imagine and all the fast food places things like that so I had a KFC for tea in there because I haven't had one then for a while I went in Marks and Spencers and got myself a few little nibbles and a couple of drinks for the hotel room as well and yeah I just had a nice little wander around the place really um, very quiet in there obviously being a Monday evening and out of holiday season there aren't many people about so it's nice and quiet so yeah just a nice little poodle about really didn't want to do too much today I've got a very busy few days ahead but yeah it seems to be quite nice around here quite nice and easy to find my way around you know they have a grid system that's one of the um, famous aspects of Milton Keynes so it's quite easy to find your way around and to cross roads and things especially when it's quiet like it is at the moment I don't know what it's like when it's really busy of course but I found it really easy just to cross roads and look where I was going and stuff and find where I wanted to go so yeah no problem so far and now I'm just going to relax and then tomorrow hopefully Bletchley Park have a nice long day around there so see you after that <laughs> hey 
well that was fun I had to uh, run outside at quarter to seven in the morning for a fire alarm I uh, never had that in a hotel before so that was a new experience um, luckily not too cold out there and spoke to a lovely couple who saw we all rock you so uh, yeah that was a bit different thankfully that wasn't too early but all's good uh, we're all let back in after the uh, fire engines arrive and they check the place out so uh, looking forward to Bletchley Park today so let's hope that goes <laughs> without any hitches So after all that drama this morning, this is the vlog that I was intending to do this evening and I've had an amazing day at Bletchley Park as I knew I would. It's such a special and fascinating place, you know, without the incredible work that they did in decoding and deciphering messages, the result of the war could have been very different genuinely. So we have a lot to thank them for, for all the freedoms we currently have. And to see it all laid out in detail like that really gives you a great sense of the scale of the operation they had to do and the difficulties they faced and the conditions they worked in and everything and the number of people that were involved and all the jobs that had to be done. And there's just so much to see there. And it's not all about reading stuff. It's not dull or anything like that. There's a mixture of kind of indoor and outdoor stuff and there's things you can listen to. There's kind of soundscapes of people talking and sound effects from the time. There's videos you can watch there's stuff you can interact with stuff you can touch it's a real variety of different things and lots of different information and stuff and you can just take your time going around it all i spent over five hours there because you just get so engrossed in it all and i had an audio description handset with me along the way which kind of described in more detail certain points around the campus couldn't do everything obviously but it certainly highlighted a few important key things which was great and in between all of that i was looking at other stuff as well sometimes using the seeing ai app on my phone to have text from signs spoken to me as well just by pointing my camera at the signs and it instantly converts it into speech so that was handy as well and yeah I just highly recommend it it is an incredible and very special place and a beautiful place and I finished the day with a visit to the National Radio Centre on the campus as well which is included within the asking price and is basically all about the amateur radio hams the amateur radio hobbyists who they got to volunteer to help them out because it's all very well bletchly deciphering and decoding messages and stuff but you've got to get those messages in the first place and you know with so many different things flying around the airwaves why not employ people who are experts in using radios to help them out so that's what they did so yeah there really were so many people involved it was great to see so many different roles acknowledged and it's just great that those secrets have kind of been unleashed so that we can really understand and appreciate exactly what went on then and yeah highly recommend it basically on thursday i'm hoping to go back to the same site to look at the national computing museum um which isn't in the kind of main asking price for Bletchley Park it's actually a separate fee which is fine it still looks very interesting this evening after I got back I just had a meal on the Weatherspoons across the way from the hotel had a nice steak dinner and a bottle of Angry Orchard cider and then I had a chocolate brownie and ice cream for afters that filled me up nicely so yeah things are going well basically I'm enjoying Milton Keynes so far so um, I'll see you after my next museum visit tomorrow Orange with the addition of tinned milk still maybe it'll keep me going for the next four hours and don't forget, girls, walls have ears. I have to be as sure as I can that the girls are not a security risk. I don't think they'll let me down. They're bright, well-educated young women. They know they're part of a bigger picture, and they must honour the trust placed in them. I warn them of the dangers of pillow talk when their husbands come back on leave. I expect you know what I mean. Hello 
again. It's Wednesday evening now. Thankfully, no dramas with fire alarms to tell you about this morning. So just the one vlog for today. And I had a lovely time at the Milton Keynes Museum for a few hours this morning. So much to see there again, organised into lots of different rooms. So you've got like a parlour room and a music room and a school room, a playroom with all the kids' toys in. There's servants' quarters. There's a laundry, a kitchen. There's a recreated street full of old style shops. There's a big barnyard full of old farming machinery. There's a big room dedicated to telecommunications and telephones from the old days. And a lot of it is interactive as well, so you can touch a lot of this stuff. And there are guides in each room who can show you how different things work. So I was playing in the telecommunications room with the exchanges, for instance, learning how to connect different calls. And they have police call boxes in there as well, where you could ring them and see the lights flashing on the top. And then in the parlour, I was having a go on a pianola, which looks like a piano, but it's actually operated automatically by some paper with like punched holes in it that scrolls around as you push on the pedals, so you can pretend like you're playing it. And there's other old music boxes and things, and some of the oldest equipment that was used to kind of play back recorded sound as well well and just so much interesting stuff to look at and the fact that you can actually touch a lot of it and interact with it and actually talk to the guides in each area and find out a lot more about it it just makes it feel so interactive and fun and interesting so I really enjoyed looking around that this morning I can highly recommend going there and then after that I decided to have a walk because I had obviously time to spare so I thought well I'll walk back to my hotel because Google Maps said it's only an hour and indeed it was it was quite an easy route to follow the way the town is designed, you can go down all these kind of back alleys and side streets and things without ever really touching a main road most of the time. And even when you do get to the main road, you can kind of either cross them easily or there are bridges that you can go under. So it's all very nicely designed so that pedestrians can get around as safely as possible, which is quite nice. And I didn't actually go straight back to my hotel because I wanted to get something to eat first, of course. So I went to the Centre MK shopping centre across the road from the hotel and the Midsummer Place shopping centre that's attached to it. And I had a walk around there again just to see where I could have somewhere to eat and ended up going to Five Guys which I've never been to before but it's basically an American burger joint and I had a big bacon cheeseburger and fries and a Dr Pepper to drink with it and that was really filling not at all healthy and very very salty but very very nice as well and I went to Hotel Chocolat after that and got some treats to myself as well and then there's basically just been relaxing in the hotel this evening because the weather's not been too pleasant and tomorrow morning there's snow forecast so I don't know if I'll be able to get to the computing museum or not but one way or another I will definitely get to We Will Rock You tomorrow night that is the next important thing the really big important thing so we'll see what happens and i'll report back tomorrow night after my final full day in this fine place so i will see you then Okay, it's Thursday afternoon. I thought I'd do another little update now. So I've got a couple of hours to kill before the show this evening and a lovely morning at the National Museum of Computing today on the Bletchley Park Estate. Thankfully, the weather held out. A little bit of snow in the air, but nothing disruptive. So I was able to get there safely. And it's really interesting. They've got loads of equipment in there, some of which is working, some of which you can even interact with. And there's loads of information in there about the history of everything, you know, right from wartime up to the present day. Um, a lot of it is very hard to read if you're visually impaired. They can really do with like large print guides, for example, and maybe audio described guides. Audio described tours would be great. They do ordinary tours. I wasn't able to do one today, but they do ordinary tours for people. But an audio described tour would be fun. But nevertheless, I read what I could using my monocular during the day and took photos of various signs that I can read later. But in particular, what I most enjoyed was talking to a couple of the guides about the stuff they knew and worked with because they gave a lot of interesting insights into the history and the working of the machines and stuff like that. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. I learned quite a lot from it and saw lots of interesting bits of machinery, took loads of photos and stuff. So I'm glad that I've been to all three museums I was aiming for this week. I'm going to be writing a lot more about these in my blog and showing lots of photos and things and there's lots of things I can look at after I get home as well in terms of YouTube videos and stuff I can read online there's a couple of films with stories relating to Bletchley Park that came out that I'll probably watch as well there's a podcast relating to Bletchley Park that I might listen to a bit of as well so there's all sorts of other things that I can look at to extend my knowledge and enjoy and appreciate things even more after I get home which I'll probably do and again talk about in my blog in terms of what I did after I came out of the computing museum today I just got the bus back into town because the weather still wasn't great and I went to Centre MK and went into pizza hut and yeah it was lovely as always their food's always nice and i like the fact that they're doing contactless payments and serving now so you just scan a qr code on the table and you just order through the website and it just comes straight to you which is ideal it's great that they're being safe in that way so yeah last big thing now is the we will rock you musical tonight which i'm really looking forward to this is something i've been really longing to see for ages so yeah really looking forward to that and i am dressed the part for it i've got my uh, queen jumper on so yeah really looking forward to that and i'll let you know how it went later See you then. 
Fantastic, as I knew it would be, of course. He's got loads of Queen songs in it, so how could the We Will Rock You musical not be fun? I mean, the story is complete and utter nonsense in the most delightful way, but the songs are inserted into it very effectively and performed extremely well by the cast, both in terms of vocals and the choreography. They're excellent, and the band are brilliant as well who accompany them. And there are lots of other Queen songs referenced in it as well. It's not just about the songs the cast perform, but you get to hear Freddie and the band a little bit as well during the show, and there are little Queen motifs in there performed by the band throughout and references to lyrics and things. So it's nice to kind of spot all these little things throughout the show other artists are mentioned as well there are other songs and other artists referenced throughout the show too so it's all about music in general and the importance of music really and creativity in general for bringing people together and celebrating the joys and the freedoms in life so there is a kind of important message underpinning all the silliness as well so yeah it's a really really good musical and the audio description was very useful as well a bit drowned out by the music but i had a nice close view of the stage anyway so it didn't really matter i had a great view but i'll write all about that in my blog review in a lot more detail but yeah my immediate reaction is fantastic very glad i've finally seen it after all these years and i'm very glad i've you know been able to do so much in morton Keynes in the few days that i've been here you know i've done everything i set out to do which is brilliant the weather didn't get in the way after all I've seen all the museums i wanted to seen the one show i've been wanting to see for years so i write about all of that when i get home sort out all my photos and everything so throughout april keep an eye on my blog for my uh, post all about it all and um, you know, I'll obviously update the links in the description for this video and the links in the favourites post to go with this in my blog as well as when I publish the post about different things. So I hope you enjoy going through all that in detail as and when I publish it. So yeah, that is my holiday at Milton Keynes over and done with. So the only other things to talk about now are stuff that I've been enjoying back in London. So here is voice over me to fill in the gaps and tell you about everything else that I've been enjoying during the month. So the other theatre show I saw this month was at the Park Theatre in Finsbury Park back in London. And this was called Who Done It Unrehearsed. And this is the second such play that the theatre have put on with that title. Because it's an occasional thing they do every couple of years to raise money for the theatre if they don't get government funding or anything like that. So they put up the ticket prices slightly and have a few other charity elements involved. And basically it's a comedy murder mystery play and they do it in a different setting and a slightly different story each time they put the play on. And they have a different celebrity guest with each performance who plays the inspector. And you don't know who the celebrity is going to be before you get to the performance is very much potluck and the celebrity doesn't have any rehearsal no script nothing so they don't know what they're letting themselves in for and during the show they get their lines fed to them through an earpiece and it's all good fun they kind of mess with the celebrity a bit so they'll make them say silly things they'll delay lines just to kind of confuse them or they'll try to direct them to speak to certain characters or find certain props you know that they may not be facing on the stage they've got to try and find things and find people very quickly or they'll kind of do big elaborate musical numbers that the celebrities kind of get involved with and kind of sing and dance along a bit or they'll put the celebrity on the spot just improvise anything they want to do you know to try and entertain the audience which kind of really catches them off guard so there's all these kind of things involved it's not about making the celebrity look stupid it's just all a good bit of fun and they all take it in good humor and everything there's a lot of big names involved as well like adam hills lee mack tony robinson caroline quentin emma thompson various people have got involved there's more listed in the blog post that i've done about this play there's also little clips as well that i've linked to where the theater have posted short little snippets of each celebrity kind of appearing on the stage just to give you a sense of you know how they were reacting to things and yeah they all do very well with it most of the names on the celebrity potentials list as it were that you see before you attend i'd heard of but one celebrity i hadn't heard of was the one that we saw on the night i was there which is fine she was very good she was sharon small she's been in various detective things on the tv and done other stage stuff like a few other people i was googling her after the show looking at a wikipedia page and stuff and she was very good she was a good sport she got involved she enjoyed herself one of the bits where she kind of had to improvise she used a bit of a get out of jail free card if you like in the sense that she remembered that a crew member had a birthday that day from the backstage crew so you know she got them out we all sang happy birthday to her sharon had actually been considering singing a song from a play that she'd been in before but i think she kind of didn't quite feel confident enough to do it but during the q a after the performance because they always get the celebrity back on stage to talk about the experience how they found it and stuff she was persuaded to sing a bit of the song that she had been considering so yeah she got involved with all that and tried everything out as she was asked to do so yeah that was good fun the audience get involved a bit as well so before the show you're able to buy a cameo raffle ticket as well as your normal ticket for the play itself to give you a chance to have a little role on stage with the cast you know only one person can win it and it wasn't me but the woman who did get up on stage you know she enjoyed it had to kind of wear a costume and stuff and say a few lines and things but other audience members were also got involved in one way or another there was a, another guy who was actually brought up on stage and asked a few questions and things and helped kind of decide how a woman was going to say a few of her lines so a bit like kind of whose lines anyway i suppose we're given a few options and you kind of pick what the person has to do there are a couple of people in the audience who were also spoken to as well and one guy was given 
them the chance to throw confetti onto the stage during a pivotal moment and stuff like that. There was also an amusing element in the sense that they had a musically appropriate door. So it was kind of an invisible door off kind of one corner path off the stage. But whenever a character kind of walks through that door, an appropriate bit of music would be played depending on what was being said or done at that moment during the play. So, you know, you get a song by the police if the police were coming and then you get a song by Sting because it's a Sting operation. It's that kind of thing, you know, it's uh, silly but fun. And at the end of the show, there was also a raffle, again, to raise money for the theatre for a chance to meet the celebrity backstage for drinks, you know, to say hello. I didn't enter that because, again, as I say, I didn't know Sharon Small, so it wouldn't really have made any sense for me to go and talk to a celebrity I didn't know anything about at the time. But had it been, say, Adam Hills or Lee Mack or somebody else, you know, I might have gone for it. Although I imagine for someone who's really famous like that, really well known, I imagine the price would have got quite high. But I would have gone for it anyway, just to see. But yeah, it was good fun. There was an audio described performance of the show as well on a different day, but I couldn't make it because it was on a work day and I couldn't get time off because we were pretty busy this time of year. But that was fine because the stage is actually kind of at floor level, a square stage, and there's the audience members on three sides of it. And I got a front row seat facing the stage front on, so I had an excellent view and was able to use my monocular to look at, you know, little details and things as well. So yeah, it was a very enjoyable day. It's a lovely little theatre. I've been there once before. And as I say, I've written a whole blog post about the place. If you want even more detail, you know, about exactly what went on and the different things that Sharon had to do during the show, then go and check that out. It's good fun. And then apart from that, in terms of going out and about, I've had a lot of nice walks in London as per usual, of course. So I fill out more and more on my map by ticking off more and more streets. I usually take photos and stick them on Instagram as well if you follow me on there. So anything interesting that I spot, I'll put there. The most iconic site this month was Big Ben because he's now had most of the scaffolding taken off him. So he's standing tall and proud against the London skyline again, which is lovely. It's great to see him back once more. Now that his renovation is very nearly complete. But apart from that, the only other things to mention are things that I've watched at home in terms of entertainment. So we'll move on to that now. And I'll start off with drama, and I'm very late to the game on this, but this is one of those shows I've been wanting to watch for a while to see what all the fuss is about. And I finally got around to watching the BBC's Line of Duty, because all six series are on iPlayer with audio description, which, being a police drama like this, is essential because there are text messages that come up, there are things on computer screens that you can see, and it's also useful for character emotions as well. There's lots of moments where the describer in this is saying, well, the character has this mixture of emotions going on because there's all these different conflicting things going on within them, and I would never have interpreted those emotions otherwise. So it's been really, really useful for all that kind of stuff. And as I say, it's a police show and it's all about the investigations of the Anti-Corruption Unit 12, or AC-12 for short, with a particular focus on the boss Ted Hastings and his closest colleagues Steve Arnos and Kate Fleming. And together they work with their team to uncover corruption within the police, you know, for crimes that other police members might be involved with or are covering up or whatever. And each series kind of has its own unique storyline in terms of the mystery they're trying to solve. But as each series progresses, it becomes apparent that they're all linked. So it actually becomes a very deep story story by the time you're getting into the later series and there's this mysterious figure called H at the top of it all and nobody's safe in this series nobody is necessarily innocent in this series because everyone has secrets some of which come out and get them into serious trouble nobody is safe from being killed off or having a serious accident it doesn't matter if you've been in the series just for one episode or for several series anything can happen to any character at any time so there's lots of twists and turns and surprises and cliffhangers throughout it gets very tense sometimes and it keeps you on your toes it's very good I'm not going to buy it on DVD or anything because because I know all the twists now and it's not something I need to watch again for a little while but I did enjoy watching it and as I say the audio description was really useful so I'm glad I finally got around to that it was nice to see some names in there that I knew as well like Neil Morrissey and Will Meller who played very different roles from the ones I've seen doing comedy shows it's great to see them doing something very different so yeah I did enjoy watching that and then in terms of movies this month, I watched what's called the Three Flavours Cornetto Trilogy of comedy films, which I've seen before, but not for ages. And while I wouldn't bother to keep the good enough entertainment to kill a few hours, and there was a particular reason why I wanted to watch them this month, I'll get to in a moment. And they're called the Three Flavours Cornetto Trilogy just because there's a humorous reference to the Cornetto ice cream treat within each of the three movies. But otherwise, all the characters and storylines are completely different each time, so they are standalone films, really. The connection is that they're written by comedian Simon Pegg with Edgar Wright, and they star Simon alongside Nick Frost and various other big names. It's quite impressive cast list for those films. The first film is by far the most famous, I would think. It's Shaun of the Dead, where Simon plays Shaun, who is a complete underachiever from London with no direction in life, but he finally has a purpose when there's a big zombie invasion where he lives and he has to kind of take charge and look after his friends and stuff. So there's a lot of good action in there, a lot of good humour and stuff. It's, you know, it's silly, but very amusing. The key thing for me about this film is that it features the Queen song Don't Stop Me Now in a really nicely choreographed bar fight scene where everything's timed along with the music. It works really well. And that song's relevant for me at the moment because I've just published the latest in my series 
series of Queen album reviews to celebrate the band's 50th anniversary, going into great detail about each of the tracks. And as it's the jazz album I've just reviewed, that features the Queen song Don't Stop Me Now. And Shaun of the Dead was largely responsible for the resurgence in popularity of that track because it wasn't really a huge hit, certainly relative to a lot of other Queen songs when it first came out. It's only been in kind of more recent decades it's become really, really popular. Obviously, the Bohemian Rhapsody movie has again had an impact on it. But yeah, Shaun of the Dead is largely responsible for making that popular again. So it made sense to watch the film having just written about it and does watch the trilogy as well. And so then there's the second film called Hot Fuzz where Simon plays Nicholas Angel, a policeman from London who is so good at his job that he's making the rest of his force look bad. So they hive him off to this small country town called Sanford instead where there isn't much intelligence among the police to speak of at all. They take a very laid back approach to things. Even when people in the town start having really gruesome accidents that Nicholas are clearly murders, they still don't really bat an eyelid. So he investigates and uncovers this horrifying secret about the town and has to attack the town to bring it back to normal. It's pretty well put together. It's quite amusing. Not quite as good as uh, Shaun of the Dead, but still pretty good. And then the third and final film is called The World's End, which is all about a 40-year-old called Gary King, played by Simon, who wants to have another go at a pub crawl that he did with his then-teenage mates many years previously, but they didn't actually complete it. But it's quite hard for him to persuade his mates to get involved with it now because they've all matured over the years since then, unlike him. But he does manage to eventually coerce them into coming along with him. But as they go on this pub crawl again in the town that they used to frequent, they find that it's been taken over by android aliens and they have to kind of fight back against that so it's a strange little film and it's not quite as good as the previous two it's the weakest of the trilogy for me simon's character gary is as irritating as it's intended to be really it does feel more irritating than amusing to me really and the story takes a little while to get going but yeah it was nice to watch those three films again it has been a while and as i say Shaun of the dead was the important one of the three and then finally in terms of tv comedy not a huge amount to mention this month but mum and i did finish watching two of a kind on dvd this month which is the first show from the morecambe and wise itv dvd box set that network released last year it contains all the surviving episodes from that series plus a few other extra bits and pieces so it's basically a lot of Morecambe Wise's earliest material there was an earlier BBC series that has long been lost and wasn't very good anyway but basically this is the earliest surviving work of Morecambe Wise so they're not at their best yet but there's still some good humour in there still some good sketches and banter and stuff and musical guests as well they have like jazz bands and occasionally more modern acts like the Beatles and the Shadows and there's female singers who crop up quite a lot as well so it's not their best work and we did skip a lot of the musical acts as well but it's still an interesting insight it's still fun and everything mum and i are now moving on to the bbc box set of their shows because that is the next thing to watch chronologically and this is where they really hit the big time really get good so it's been interesting to watch more wise gradually improving their acts and refining their acts but now we're really seeing them hit the big time which you know we're really looking forward to going through in detail and then in terms of new modern stuff i've been enjoying my usual favorites like the last leg on channel four there's a new series of not going out that's just started on bbc one we've been listening to just a minute on radio four so the usual stuff basically and apart from all that i've also watched a couple of charity comedy events on tv as well so there was the national comedy awards on channel four held in aid of stand up to cancer presented by tom allen and there was a couple of touching tributes and lengthy standing ovations to a couple of people in particular firstly the ukrainian president who was a former actor and comedian and is now courageously defending his country of course and then there was a dearly missed comedian sean Locke, of course who also won the award for the outstanding male comedy entertainment performance for his role in aid out of 10 cats does countdown so he got a couple of ovations quite rightly and then there were various other awards like a lifetime achievement award for billy Connolly and Catherine Ryan got the Outstanding Female Comedy Entertainment Performance and Best Stand-Up Show went to Ricky Gervais. Taskmaster got the Best Comedy Entertainment Show and so on. So yeah, it was a nice selection of awards for things that I knew and enjoyed in there. And then naturally we had Comic Relief, of course, this month. And there's never a lot that appeals to me in those telethons these days, so I always record it and skip the vast majority of it. But it is for a good cause. And there are a few bits and pieces that were okay within there. For instance, I saw the Mind Magler routine from Mischief Theatre's production Magic Goes Wrong that I've seen in person in the theatre. The cast of Man Juliet performed some of the big cover songs from their show. French and Saunders arrived at the repair shop with Judy Dench and her daughter Finty Williams, so there's a bit of trouble going on there. There's some banter from people on QI. Disabled comedian Rosie Jones was among five brave stars who performed opera live for the first time after just 24 hours of preparation, so that was a very brave thing to do. And there was an adult bedtime story read by Stephen Fry, Alex Brooker and Josh Widdicombe, among others. So yeah, there are a few nice little bits and pieces in there, nothing exceptional, but it was okay to flick through some of it. And at the end of the day, they raised a lot of money for a very important cause, which is the most important thing. And that at long last is it. Thank you very much for watching through all of that in this special favourites post this month. 
Um, there's going to be a lot more detail in my blog, and there already is to some degree. You know, with this video, there is a dedicated favourites post with more detail about the entertainment that I've been enjoying. There's also a dedicated post about the Who Done It show I talked about, so you can go and check that out for a lot more detail about that. And then there's going to be more posts about the Milton Keynes stuff I've been doing as well. So keep an eye out for all that stuff, and I hope you enjoy it all just as much as I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I hope I'll be able to do more trips like this as well. It's great that I can, you know, go out independently and navigate completely unfamiliar places without any difficulty. You know, thanks to you know my mobile phone with you know the apps that you can use these days on it the movie app has been very useful um so i'll definitely be using that again for public transport walking it's not always so reliable for it's better to use something like google maps for that i've found but certainly for public transport the movie app's been very useful so i'll be using that again but yeah that is it basically i'm very glad i've been able to do that and i'm very glad i've been able to share it with you i look forward to doing more trips like that um, april's gonna be relatively back to normal um, nothing really special planned for the month but I've got things in mind that I want to do so yeah thank you very much for watching this month and um, don't forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my social media pages and on my blog as well and yeah that is it I hope you enjoy April as well and I will see you for another video very soon bye for now